Bismillah. In ayah number 12 of Surah Al-Buruj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna beltu sharabbika lashadeed. Indeed, the crushing grip of your Lord is most severe. This verse is a verse of warning. And indeed, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses al-wa'd and al-wa'id, both the promise of reward and the threat of punishment as part of the balanced Quranic approach of incentivizing the very best of human behavior and warning the wrongdoers and oppressors, both large and small, that they will ultimately stand to account before one that cannot be overcome and whose power cannot be overwhelmed. They will stand before the Lord of the worlds. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, comments about the power of God Almighty after this stirring account of the boy and the king, the people of the ditches, and the horrific genocide that this man and his army, his apparatus, his court visited upon these innocent people. But also the verse in the overall Quranic context reminds us of the oppression that can come from our own tongues and our own hands. In fact, the same verse carries layers of meaning for both the believers and the disbelievers and wrongdoers. For those believers that will deal with God on terms of His mercy, seeking Allah's forgiveness for the sins that come from all of us, but restraining their tongues and their hands from the rights of people. This makes a person think not only of the oppression that comes from generals of armies or heads of state or matters of life and death. It causes the believer to reflect carefully on the oppression that can come from a manager at work or in the marketplace weighing and giving people their right, or in businesses where some people will cheat and seek gain on others, or the types of oppressions that can come in relationships or in our own homes. When the believer considers that Allah's vengeance is swift, that God Almighty's power is unstoppable, that the crushing grip of the most powerful is able to deal with the tyrants of this world on those terms of power and will overwhelm them, then a person reviews themselves regularly. The great Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, the notable companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, bring yourselves to account before you are brought to account. Meaning hold yourself to account before you are held to account before the Lord of the worlds on the day of judgment. For those unrepentant tyrants, for those criminals, for those wrongdoers that would ignore every sign and ignore every opportunity to change their ways, to listen to advice, to see the signs of God Almighty that are all around us. This verse carries layers of meaning as well. It is a reminder that no matter how overwhelming the power of a tyrant or a criminal may seem, again, not only at the heads of armies and state apparatuses, but indeed, at the head of a company or a managerial position, or one of these spaces that we will all vacate very soon for life is fleeting. This verse of the Quran reminds us that no matter how overwhelming that power is, it is very limited, it is very short, and it is very fleeting. And ultimately the end of affairs returns to the owner of real power, real majesty, and absolute ownership the Lord of the worlds, glorified and exalted is He. Allah reminds us elsewhere in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zumur, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Say, indeed the true losers are the ones that will lose themselves and their families on the Day of Judgment. Indeed, this is manifest loss. So that verse is an important reminder for all of us and indeed all of humanity, that there is no price that is worth it for a cheap matter of this world, for a material gain, for a promotion on someone else's back, for a dollar that tomorrow will leave us the way it left the Pharaoh, though he sought to bring it to the grave, that tomorrow all of us will stand before the Lord of the worlds with only our deeds to be with us seeking the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala. Dear Muslims, Ask yourselves, where is the Pharaoh? Where is the king of this story? Where is Qarun? Where is Haman? Where are the oppressors of the 20th century or of yesterday that have all departed this world and now await a reckoning before the Lord of the worlds? And when we ask ourselves these questions, we know that death is a reality that we should keep close to our hearts and indeed is one of the most powerful forces to motivate 
a life full of movement towards goodness and to motivate the best that is within us to restrain our tongues and our hands from the rights of people. The Prophet Muhammad says, the true Muslim is the one whom people feel secure from the harm of his hand and the harm of his tongue. May Allah make us from those that guard the rights of others and that heed the warning of this noble verse, Allahumma ameen, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard and secure the rights of those that have not secured it in this life. For those that do not see it, may Allah bring it to them on the day of judgment until they are well pleased. Allahumma ameen, wassalamu alaykum.